Jinko Chisambo, Aoeno Hatsu Yako Reisha, translates to 1903 or 703 p.m., Luminous Train from Oeno. Genre-wise, this title might be referred to as a visual novel outside of Japan, and in Japan, it would likely be called a sound novel, although that term was trademarked by Chunsoft and thus became a proprietary eponym. So saying sound novel instead of visual novel would be like referring to any video game as Nintendo or calling a generic brand tissue a Kleenex. You get the point. Because of this, Visit coined the term hypernovel and placed it on the covers of all of their visual novel releases. This genre of game is a text-heavy experience sprinkled with decisions here and there that change the outcome of the game. Basically, it's a digital choose-your-own-adventure novel with some illustrations or photographs. Released in March of 1999, this title is a sequel to Saishu Densha, or Last Train, which came out the previous year. Some people might know the scenario writer on both of these games, Junichi Osako, who has an extensive track record as an author behind a number of manga series. 1903 marks the fourth hyper novel entry to be developed and published by a company called Visit, and my god is it difficult to find any info on this company. Not only because they're currently defunct, but also because the name of the company. Seriously, try it out for yourself. Go to Google and type in Visit Game Company. You just get a million articles aimed at kids in Velcro sandals that want to visit Mario's house and learn about how to make a Nintendo, I mean video game. At the very least, I can list some of the games they put out, none of which were released outside of Japan. Visit developed one and published all of the titles in the Shinri game series on Super Famicom, all of which would get remade on PlayStation 1 to be alongside their many sequels. The games in the series are pretty out there. They're basically like psychological horror personality test games, like Myers-Briggs in a haunted house and on acid. Visit also made Appleseed Prometheus no Shintaku, or Appleseed, Oracle of Prometheus. And in addition to 1903 and Last Train, Visit developed three other hyper novels: Akazu Noma, or The Red Room, Heisa Byoin, or Closed Hospital, and The Great Ghost Mansion, The True Story of Jun Hamamura, which not only had the aforementioned Junichi Osako as scenario writer, but it also starred him in the game alongside the titular Jun Hamamura, who was a Japanese actor that appeared in over 130 films released between 1938 and his death in 1995. I guess this means that his performance was filmed at least three years before the release of this game in 1998? I'm not sure, but Jun Hamamura was in High and Low, Gamera, and The Shogun Assassins, amongst many other notable films. The Visit Hypernovel series would continue with releases developed by other companies until the year 2003, when it seems to be that Visit just stopped. I'm honestly not sure if they transitioned to some other focus, like many of these other companies do, with shovelware, pachinko, or mobile apps. They might have changed their name and logo to something else, or just altogether quit the business. I don't know. I'm sure you're already wondering how I played this game, given that it's untranslated, and I'm stupid. I used a combination of Google Lens on my phone and some much appreciated help from friends. This method was far from perfect, but it was better than nothing. Sometimes the translation was spot on, and at other times everything on screen was complete gibberish. The effort was made all the more difficult by the fact that much of the writing was done in a very stylistic, pulp noir way that jumped between first and third person narrative. Regardless, we prevailed, and the majority of the story was ultimately understood. Of course, it wasn't until afterwards that I found the entire printed out script on Wayback Machine, which makes it easier to translate. I'll link that in the description. Anyways, let's play 1903 Luminous Train from Ueno.
I want to take a minute to dwell on this opening, which I have to admit is my favorite part of this experience. In one short clip, we have multiple environments that are all connected by the driving force of the story, a single train set on a single track that houses all of the players in this game. We start in the eerie stretch of space that is the train station and continue outside to the city of Ueno at night, catching glimpses of small buildings peering at us through the dark with their many glowing eyes. We cross a bridge set under a distant horizon of twinkling civilization, reminding us that we're far from it. Looming mountain silhouettes watch us pass an abundance of pastures, both farmed and vacant, when a gentle snow begins to fall. The light flurry overstays its welcome as it multiplies to form a blizzard. It's a harsh and overwhelming snowstorm that this train is barreling through, and suddenly we adopt the comfort of being within this vessel. We're protected from the elements, and we're warm. It's a good thing that we're in this train, and not out there. Or is it? 1903 Luminous Train from Ueno has you choosing between two characters to act out a roughly 45-minute scenario with nearly countless branching paths. Because there are so many different stories and situations to encounter, the overall experience could net you hours worth of fun. Ipeyakai is the first of the optional protagonists, and he is a 28-year-old cameraman that is always rushing back and forth between his freelance gigs. He likes to make miniature plastic models and motorcycles. Ipe has a technology-based event to cover tomorrow morning in Hokkaido, and he missed his plane when an interview went too long, which is why he's now taking a last-minute train. Miyuki Hatakeyama is a 24-year-old junior high school history teacher that is traveling in a double sleeper car with a veteran teacher from her school named Izumi Sakamoto. The two are testing out a possible school trip to take their students on in the near future. Miyuki is very good at mathematics and she enjoys reading. Her character actually appeared in the previous title in the series, Last Train, and is now suffering from post-trauma due to the events of that game. Both of the optional main characters seem to be experiencing insomnia which lends itself to some of the more surreal, dreamlike segments of the game. The train that this game centers around is Hokutose No. 5, which translates to the Big Dipper No. 5, and was very much a real train that traveled from Ueno to Sapporo on the same timetable at 7.03 p.m., <laughs> at least up until four months after the game was released when its number was changed to three and it became a temporary train. It's like 10,000 spoons when all you need is a knife, right? As far as mechanics are concerned, there really isn't much to describe here. The D-pad and circle button are all that you'll really use the whole game, with the exception of post-game chapter selection screens that you scroll through with L1 and R1. For the most part, you'll be smashing circle through walls of text until you get to an occasional decision section, which will obviously change the outcome of the story depending on what you choose. And oh man, our scenarios wildly different from each other. In one playthrough, I got beaten unconscious by some guy, woke up to the whole train being empty, discovered a mutant bug infestation and got attacked by giant insects, got held at gunpoint and tied to a chair, tried to help a little girl get off the train before a bomb blew the whole thing up, and died in that process. That was just one short playthrough. In another one, I spent the whole time in a dining car drinking lots of wine with a woman, opening up about a dark past to her. It pays a piece of crap, by the way. <laughs> so, so I guess he got famous as a photographer because one time he was crossing the street hand in hand with his fiance when a car hit and killed her. So instead of rushing to help her, he took a photo and displayed it in his big premiere exhibition and the news spread rapidly of this photojournalist that documented his fiance's death and showed it to the world, making his name well known. So of course her parents try to sue him and there's all this drama, but he wins the case and gets away with it. Now he drones on and on about how guilty he feels for taking the photo and how he could have reacted some other way, but he mentions nothing about his series of conscious decisions to display the photograph in his gallery. Like he could have been trying to get a photo of the license of the hit and run driver and instinctively taken a photo of his fiance, that could be excused. But to do all the other stuff and then this whole scene disregards the other stuff and we witness him deal with the trauma of the initial photo, it's just hilarious. And the woman at the table with him doesn't seem to care about the other stuff either. She's all like, I'm so terribly sorry you have to deal with that. It must be so traumatizing for you. Oh, you poor thing. And then they flirt with each other a bunch. And if you choose to not get too drunk, she talks about how she's on the train to kill a man that stole money from her family business. And then the game ends. If you did choose to drink more, you get wasted and wake up with a dead body in your room and the game turns into a long whodunit Agatha Christie situation where you're framed for the murder and you have to systematically figure out who was in what car at what time and then put all the evidence together to make a final decision. It's neat, but it's exhausting to do through translation. I played a few times through the game as Miyuki and her story paths are somewhat less eventful, though more violent. 
Usually, you're teaming up with Sakamoto Sensei to fight off a man with a gun who has planted a bomb on the train. Miyuki really likes to talk to herself about things before she does them, which I suppose is the intelligent thing to do in real life, but in this video game, uh, it would be nice if she'd just move a little faster with everything. There's one positive ending pathline you can take that results in a denouement segment with the surviving members of the train talking to each other on a couch for what feels like an eternity. And the conversation is comprised of nothing more than lazy Scooby-Doo-esque explanation dialogue. So you mean to tell me it was old man Donovan in the werewolf mask all along? I assume you've probably been waiting for me to address the odd visuals of the game. The obvious standout is the decision to make all of the male characters blue and the female characters pink, which reminds me of that song by the Gizmos. They all have their opacity lowered to like 90%, and I'm not entirely sure why this was all chosen. The first assumption would be that it was done to cut costs and make it easy for Visit to put the game out, which is a possibility. Another take is that this style was specifically chosen to match some sort of theme. I'm not sure either way, but it would be great to come across an interview with someone that worked on the game addressing this decision. I also just want to float for a bit on the appreciation of this era of rendered background graphics. Everything has this specific gleam to it, with all of the tiny particles being visible and the odd uncanny look of a world off-kilter to ours. I think that the game Mist best showcases this particular style and look that I'm failing to properly describe. Its eeriness is distilled into a setting that still gives me the creeps to this day, but in a good way. I like it when something like this can make the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Life would be so boring without it. Ultimately, when approaching something like 1903 Luminous Train from Ueno, I have to remind myself of the limitations that are set within the genre and understood. Personally, I'd like to see more animation, establishing shots, and character interaction. There could be more musical variety, though the few that were there worked well for the game, I suppose. You're gonna laugh at me for saying this when talking about a visual novel, but more than anything, I would have liked to see more use of Hitchcockian tension building. Moment by moment dread should be oozing from the screen when some of these scenarios play out. But that doesn't happen, and I know that right now you're shouting at the screen because this dumb guy is wanting genius cinematic storytelling in a PS1 visual novel from 1998. But look, I don't care, I'm just seeing something for what it could be. 1903 Luminous Train from Ueno was re-released in August of 2000, though I can't find any variation in the cover art, so that's all I have to say about that. Unless it's properly translated, 1903 is unfortunately not an enjoyable experience. But... If you speak and read Japanese, then yes, I would recommend checking 1903 Luminous Train from Ueno out. If you like this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon, as it would allow me to focus solely on this project. Thank you so much to Rai Guy Cly, Mike, Ryan, JC, Rob, Lily, and Moomin Biscuit. Be nice to people. Bye.